This tool I'm going to show you today is already worth paying the full studio version of DaVinci Resolve and I'm talking about the Magic Mask. Today I'm going to show you how to use it and I will give you five practical use cases so you can immediately start creating. And if you watch until the end, I will give you... Shut up and don't waste their time. They don't give a shit about what's in the end. But maybe there is something. Open your clip in your timeline and go to the color page where you can find the Magic Mask tab. There you will find two versions of the mask. One is for objects and one is made for people. But to be honest, the object mask is working better for cutting out people in the most cases. So I always go with the object mask. Now to select your subject, take the eyedropper tool with the plus symbol and draw a line to tell DaVinci what you want to select. Now we can preview our selection on this button here and our selection will appear red. You can see DaVinci did a pretty good job, but it's still not perfect. That's why we will choose the option better and you can see even at the hair we got an amazing result, which is almost perfect. If the program still selected some parts that you don't want, just take the eyedropper tool with the minus symbol and deselect the part that you don't want. You can draw as many plus and minus lines as you want to make your mask perfect. We only apply the mask now to one frame and to apply it to all, we need to track it in both directions. Press the two arrows and wait until DaVinci do its job. To make your selection transparent, we only have to do one more thing. Go to the node section and right click in an empty space and choose add alpha output. Connect now the blue output with the blue dot and this is the general way of telling DaVinci to make something transparent. If you go back now to your edit page, you can see the final result. So let's start to get creative with it. The first use case I'm going to show you now is to put some text behind your back. Copy your clip and drag it two layers above your original one and apply the magic mask to the upper clip. It's the same process as I have showed you in the beginning. To clarify, the upper clip is our cut it out version and the clip below is our original, which we use as our background. Now you can take any text and drag it between your background and your clip with the magic mask. It will appear now behind your back. The second use case is a pretty similar approach. If you want to change your background, you can do this by dragging in your layer in the same position where your text was and you already have a new background. You can also modify it a bit with the crop tool and cut the bottom part of your background and feather it out to achieve a different result. The third use case I'm going to show you is color grading. If you select your subject with the magic mask, you can color grade your selection and make it brighter, for example, to make it stand out. Another use case would be manipulating your background color. For this, you only have to select your original clip and desaturate it or even make it black and white. It's up to you. The last practical use case would be to unsharpen your background. Simply apply a Gaussian blur to your clip. Adjust it to your liking and you achieve a blurry background look that only expensive camera lenses can do. And in the beginning you saw that I punched myself. Guess what? I used the magic mask. I just cut it out the clip where I'm punching and with a little bit of acting and timing, you can achieve awesome results. Take this tool, get creative and let's start creating.